G'day everyone and welcome to another DUC Migrating to Australia podcast. I'm Wes Zan and today I've got a special guest. I'm joined by the Chief Inspector Scott Collins from the Accelerate Recruitment and Retention People, Culture and Wellbeing Department at the South Australia Police. Um, so Scott, welcome and that is one long title you have, mate. <laughs> Look, and thank you so much for uh, allowing us to come on today and talk to you and your listeners for your podcast. Really appreciate it. No, our pleasure, mate. And a big shout out for you and all the other um, service people, what you guys do in Australia around the world, mate, would be a very different um, place if we didn't have the support of you guys. So um, welcome. I think um, probably the best thing to do, mate, is just, um, oh, I guess, discuss how we got connected. So I remember I was... um, I think it was a nice Friday afternoon, Scott, by memory, and I, I had a phone call and I was um, I answered the phone from the Chief Inspector, Scott Collins. I'm thinking, oh, my God, this doesn't sound promising. Um, I was pretty sure I didn't do anything wrong, but I was like, oh, hang on. What, you know, anyway, and then you, um, you put towards me that um, South Australia police are looking to recruit um, 200 um, police officers. Uh, and then when you started mentioning the visas, I was like, wow, this is an op- – this is a – well, it's the best visa people can get, really, when you look at the sponsored side, um, but also um, an awesome state to go to. Um, and then you started saying, you know, you, like, like we started explaining or you started explaining um, all the perks and all that that come with it. So we then started doing a bit of marketing for you. And, um, yeah, it's you, you, you actually also went to the UK yourself as well with the team. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Um, last month we headed over there as a, a delegation of six and we uh, travelled around the uh, United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland, and uh, to tell and meet uh, lots of our applicants and potential applicants what we were what we were doing. That's awesome. Yeah, and um, so but you're originally from the UK. That's right. So um, I was a detective sergeant in the UK uh, with Thames Valley Police in good old Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire. Um, I'd actually lived in uh, Victoria in the late 80s and uh, gone to high school out there. My dad was in the army, so we did like a, an exchange post. And that's where my love for Australia developed. Um, and the challenge uh, was for me that I also loved being a police officer. And unfortunately, um, police officers are on the list of skills normally um, that were recognised by the Australians to, um, you know, to, to, to come out and migrate out here. So um, I was made aware um, around about 2004 um, that South Australia police were recruiting and uh, police officers. So what an opportunity that was to combine Uh, my passion for being a police officer and my love for Australia. So that resulted uh, in myself and my family moving over in 2005 uh, to join the wider family of SAPOL. Um, So I've I've been with them for 18, 19 years now, and um, I've been lucky enough to work through the ranks, uh, ranging from, you know, um, walking the beat of Hindley Street, the good old entertainment uh, precinct in Adelaide, uh, and I'm now a Chief Inspector in People, Culture, Wellbeing uh, with International Recruitment. So yeah, good on you, mate. Good, good, um, you know, good step up. Was it? I mean, do you, do you miss not being on the beat? Oh, look, um, there are times when I, I definitely uh, uh, miss walking the beat. I've got to say, but I think my body appreciates the fact that I can sit behind a desk at the moment. But look, this um, this is all intrinsically linked to um, getting boots on the ground uh, for the community here in South Australia. So I do feel like I'm doing my bit to to attract experienced police officers so they can support the South Australian community. Well, you're definitely the right man for the job, mate, because it's almost 20 years since you moved. I know that sounds a long time. It is a long time. Um, but, yeah, we're heading on 20 years. I actually had to break this to you, Scott, but it is almost 20 years. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. So you're the right man for the job. You've been All there, I've... done that. You wear the T-shirt. Um, you wear the hat as well, I guess, with this one. And, um, yeah, you're probably the best person to, to, to help people from, from the UK. Is it just from the UK or is it any – or are you – you know, anyone who's interested in joining the police force? No, it's a good question, Wes. And look, we are restricted um, from the countries that we are recruiting from and what have been decided upon. So we are recruiting from uh, the United Kingdom. So obviously England, Scotland and Wales. We are uh, and, and Northern Ireland, as it is, and also the Republic of, of Ireland. So that's the first time we've ever been to the Republic of Ireland to recruit. We have actually been, um, you know, the last time we did it was in 2012. Uh, we actually went to the, the UK to recruit. 
um, but also recruiting from New Zealand, and um, which obviously doesn't have the same visa restrictions as what the, the UK and Republic of Ireland do. And also, um, we're offering some really good incentives for uh, interstate police officers um, to come over and join us here in South Australia. Yeah, excellent. So, so is it is it a nationwide shortage of um, of, of police officers, or is or is it, is it just mainly a South Australia issue at the moment, or is it Australia wide, mate? No, look, I think the employment market's a tough one at the moment for um, employers, um, and you know the moon's have aligned with this one for South Australia because, in respect of, um, we've got the lowest unemployment rate since the nineteen seventies. And if I'm honest with you, we would much rather recruit from our local community, um, but unfortunately, um, we, um, we we're not. You know, it's, it's a tough market to recruit from. So, and we refuse to lower our standards. So. Um, you know, to get the best possible candidate we can uh, to go out and support the community. So, um, you know, I can't talk for other agencies and how they're doing, but, you know, that's that's the reason why we're um, going overseas to, to recruit. And plus, you know, the, the skills that the experienced police officers will have from those areas um, will be fantastic and really uh, are transferable into our local market. So um, it would be a really good addition uh, to our community. Do the, is, is, is it common for... Um... I don't know, like you see, like you've got carpenter Facebook groups and tradie Facebook groups and nurse Facebook groups all around the world. That. Is it something that like service people do, like, you know, police officers and everything? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it common for police officers, I guess, the ones you're approaching? Are they aware that there's a shortage of police officers um, in Australia? Yeah, well, they will do with South Australia Police because we've had a, a really good um, marketing campaign, which I know you assisted us with. Um, and... Uh, the adverts um, were put into some of the, the social um, groups that police officers um, are part of. So there's like the thin blue line um, is, is, is one of them. Uh, and that's where we've advertised. So they, they really are aware um, of uh, what we're doing. Um, we do have a, a larger campaign that's running at the moment. And in fact, um, we uh, some of the listeners here may see some mobile billboards that are going to be driving around some of the major cities in the UK over this weekend. So um, obviously this podcast will go out after that's occurred. So it'll be interesting to see if anybody saw them. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll let you know, mate. And um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Hope that they can. So, but what the you know, what's the criteria for people to be able to join um, you know, the police force, mate, with you guys? Yeah, so there are some criteria that people need to be aware of. Um, so um, we're safe are recruiting officers with a minimum of three years policing experience in the last five years so they they must have come from uh one of the countries um that we just previously spoke about so the uk republic of ireland and new zealand um we're also obviously like i said encouraging people from interstate so but with the um the overseas candidates um as you would be well aware they must meet the department of, of home affairs guidelines um, and, and two of the major components around that, and, and you'll be able to uh, talk to this as well, Wes, is that um, um, our labour agreement that we uh, had to, to enter into to get these fantastic visas is they must be under 45 at the time that the visa application is submitted. So at the time the visa application is submitted, they must be under 45. So um, that's really important to remember. And the other one is, uh, again, is, is the health criteria uh, around um, the, the application. So if, if there's quite, you know, there's a, there's a whole um, plethora of reasons why, um, you know, your visa might be declined uh, for health reasons. And it's important that people do their homework in relation to that. So um, so, so from there, once they have been um, selected or, uh, sorry, had a, a visa um, application, uh, approved and um, the six successful applicants um, will participate in a condensed training course of 15 weeks so it's just like a swift induction and swearing in process to accelerate the deployment to the front line so um, further to that I would encourage anybody to uh, check out our website at uh, www.police.sa.gov.au or you can google say uh, SA Police International Recruitment um, or reach out to the, one of the team, and um, I'm quite happy to share that, that email now. That'd be that's Saypol Recruiting at Police SA Gov AU, and um, one of our team will be more than happy to help you. Or you may well even uh, get to speak to me in in a lot of cases too. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, well, look, you know, we can definitely put a link and all that that's, um, on the bottom and all that off it. So um, we'll make sure we you know we get that done for you. So. Um, 
You mentioned there's like a little training period. Like, is it, is it like Monday to Friday, or do, or is it like for is it full time? Is it you know they have to travel to go to this training part? How does that work? So the training takes place at the South Australian Police Academy. That's in Taparu, um, in not far from Port Adelaide, basically. Um, so it is a fifteen week condensed course, um, and it is paid um, whilst whilst you're there. So um, yeah, so the the training. Um, we don't need to teach the people basically how to be um, police officers because they've already come from that background. But so the program is uh, primarily focused on the first responder policing role and the SAPOL transition program, which they'll yeah. be on as being specifically designed uh, to cater for prior policing experience. Um, the training and assessment uh, is a blend uh, skills based training uh, with the theoretical uh, content, so the law and policy. Um, and also look at how they would respond to an incident here in South Australia. Um, and then it's combined with the operational safety training in the use of police firearms, which is obviously quite alien to um, the police officers that are coming over from the United Kingdom, unless they're from a specialist firearms unit, uh, and the driving of the police vehicles and defensive tactics and a, a very, uh, very variety of operational equipment. So, yeah, so an interesting course. Um, we do, we've learned from the past, um, two of those days uh, will be what we would say are afternoon shifts. The reason that is, is so it allows people and their families to um, do some of the life building stuff that's required to occur when you migrate to South Australia. So, you know, yeah, well going, to, going to the bank or, and trying to find a car or looking at one of those, you know, looking at a house or a school or, or whatever that you need to do. Yeah, no, it makes sense, makes sense. Mate, you know, I'm gonna ask, um, what are you offering? <laughs> what what, what I get, mate? The big question yes, people want to know. A, that's a really good question. So, um, South Australia Police will reimburse um, successful UK and Irish recruits the cost associated with attaining their permanent visa. So, as you said, it's the 186 visa. We'll cover off on that in, in, a, in a short while, but this is a permanent visa, which is a fantastic, um, I say, gold class visa. So, that includes the um, also the, uh, the peripheral costs around medicals and police checks. Um, not only for the main applicant for their, but also for their eligible dependents. And again, um, it comes with a little bit of a caveat to say, you know, we're happy to, to assist with any uh, migration questions where we can, but we always encourage people to go on to the, uh, to the uh, immigration website of the Department of Home Affairs to uh, shore up some of their uh, questions and fact finding or, or use a migration agent to, um, to, to cl clarify things, especially if there's some nuances around their personal circumstances. So based on, um, yeah, sorry, we'll also cover off on uh, the medical costs uh, for your visa and also um, the, the, the police certificates that are, are required. So look, for a family of four, um, that's around just over $11,000. That's 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 pretty uh, pretty good package there. And then combine that with, um, you know, we've got a pretty competitive salary and we found that when we went over to the UK and Ireland, that when we explained sort of what the, the, the salaries were uh, here um, that there's a you know quite a lot of interest in in, in how much could be earned here in South Australia um, we've got limitless opportunities for learning and career growth um, and um, we offer merit-based selection processes over here so we we do take into consideration when people apply for for, for, for courses or for um, you know um, um, specialisms that uh, we look at their previous experience um, yep. Um, flexibility at six weeks annual leave. Um, we've got um, uh, additional financial and flexibility incentives for regional postings. So, uh, in some of our regional postings, they're entitled to um, subsidised housing, um, which can make the ease of moving over and the financial burden of moving over even easier for you. Um, and um, obviously, as I said, the the course is fully um, is fully paid um, that they would uh, attend. And let's not forget that's all whilst under policing uh, policing under the blue skies of South Australia, which, as you said prior, I think it's pouring down in the eastern states at the moment. But here in South Australia, and for the majority of the time, there's big blue skies and the sun above us. I, I, I just blame that on Lisa's biasness to every time I do a podcast, mate. She's making me do it for South Australia. She thinks I don't notice this, but um, I'm really covering a lot of South Australia in podcasts these days. Um, Scott, you mentioned the 186 visa. So, guys, the 186 visa is um, the best visa. It's a permanent residency visa on arrival. Okay, it's an amazing visa. Um, 
you know, it is the best, well, it's the best part of the sponsored visa. Um, they generally um, can be granted pretty quick, okay? Usually anything to do with defence or safety or anything like that, the actual immigration will actually favour these occupations. You'll find that in things with health and all that. Um, when we did the podcast the other day with um, Sean from South Australia government, we had, um, who was talking about that as well. So the ENS, uh, the, the ENS visa is a great opportunity for everyone involved to get that. Um, mate, we, we spoke a bit about the, um, you know, the condensed training course and, you know, and everything like that. But are you getting a lot of interest? Because to me, you're offering an awesome visa. You're giving an extra two weeks holiday, which sounds pretty good, fitness and health benefits and all that. Um, mate, surely you'd be getting hit up a bit, wouldn't you? Yeah, we are. Um, we've had a significant amount of interest. In saying that, the campaign is definitely still uh, open. As I said, we're not dropping our standards. So we still expect people to meet the standards required of a South Australian police officer, regardless of experience or not. There's obviously also the um, the constraints around, um, you know, the, the expectations from the Australian um, government in relation to um, the criteria um, to be able to migrate to Australia. So um, we are getting a lot of interest and, um, but, you know, there are, have been some people who have fallen out, you know, due to not meeting the criteria with SAPOL or, or the migration process. So, um, Absolutely, our advice is get your application in uh, sooner rather than later, um, um, and we'll we'll see uh, how you go. Yeah, that's um, yeah. Obviously, you know, got to be in it to win it, guys. It sounds like a a really good opportunity when you, when you go to the other countries, mate, and you um, obviously go in there. Like, are they shortage of police officers as well? Like, if you go to the UK, are they looking for more? Because I well, I had a feeling that they were always advertising for people. Uh, for police officers as well. Is it hard to go over there and poach them? Look, um, as I said, I think the employment market is pretty tough um, across the world at the moment. I'm not an expert and I'm not sure what their numbers are. Um, the numbers of people that we're actually looking for, 200 on the scale of things, is is pretty pretty slim um, in compared you know, to the wider population of police officers. So, um, We've had no um, no issues from uh, organisations uh, in the UK and, and the like, um, and this is about giving uh, people like like myself that I had an opportunity to to work in another police uh, service. And look, um, certainly in the UK, um, moving in between to different uh, organisations, police and organisations is not unusual. So, and and it does happen in Australia too. So, um, yeah, it's not an unusual thing. Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask you this one as well, mate. Why do you reckon they should move to South Australia over other states? You've been here for a while, mate. Go on. <laughs> well, look, they, we know, we know um, when you do some Google search, searches that um, South Australia continuously ranks as one of the most livable places in the world, um, offering a, a quality education and a healthcare system, a much lower cost of living than our eastern counterparts, um, with a vibrant and thriving city life and beautiful beaches and parks. And um, it really does offer that. You know, I live in the uh, you know in the southern suburbs of Adelaide, and um, I can turn left at the end of my driveway and and head to McLaren Vale to what I would argue are some of the best wineries in the world, and the the vista is just phenomenal. I can head straight uh, ahead and head to the beach um, where um, it's not like the likes of the UK with Bournemouth where tails are overlapping and, and uh, people are, are getting each other's way. Um, you can go to multiple beautiful beaches and, um, and experience a, a, a wonderful um, a wonderful life there. And then I can turn right and head towards the city. The city for me is um, 30 minutes away and um, we have things such as the Fringe. We have just had the Live Golf that, that took place in, in Adelaide. We've got the Adelaide Oval. We have big concerts to play. We have the cricket. Um, it, it's just an amazing place to live. Um, I generally find the South Australians, um, because it's not the rat race of the Eastern States, are pretty laid back. Um, yep, I agree. There is a, um, you know, a real enviable work-life balance um, that you can achieve um, if, if, if you want it. But at the same time, if you, if you want, if you want to run at 100 miles an hour, there's also the opportunity. You know, it's, it's it really is your choice. Um, from a safety perspective, um, I still um, find it amazing that we can walk through the city and feel really safe. You know, probably like yourself, 
Wes and Lisa, we've, you know, we've, we're, we're traveled, we've been to lots of cities, um, and, you know, you, you probably have your, you know, you're looking around and, and, and wondering whether you're, you're safe or not. But um, I genuinely feel very safe um, in uh, Adelaide and, and certainly uh, I find it a fantastic place to bring up a family and they've done nothing but thrive since arriving here. So I, it, I, I think know. that's what we're getting for most of our people we're interviewing, mate, like that, you know, that's what it is. It is about the family lifestyle and it's about what the kids and that can do and everything. So. I hope you don't mind, but I might get a little bit personal with you, mate. So um, you mentioned, you know, raising kids and all that. Like, like, where have you seen the big differences with your children being in Australia compared to the UK? I think for me, they stay kids for longer. Um, and they, when I, it was quite funny because when I first came over, um, we were looking at a house and it was next to a reserve. So for those people in the UK listening, um, you know, that would be the, the green, for one of, as we would know it over there. Uh, or if yeah. there was a play park next to your house, you would cringe and you wouldn't buy a house next to a green or a reserve because you would be fearful of kids hanging out, causing dramas, you know, graffitiing and damaging things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that, that just doesn't happen over here. Um, it, 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 it really doesn't happen over here. Um, and I would joke, say, look at those kids over there, you know, um, on their bikes heading to the beach or look at those kids over there playing on the park or, you know, it, it really is um, a, a different environment and um, the opportunities for them um, um, outside of schooling, um, you know, with sport, with sort of life saving and all the other stuff that goes along um, with South Australia is, is just endless. But parents, it does, I'll give you this warning, say goodbye to your life because I tell you what, mate, I've got a few <laughs> sharks tonight, which is rep basketball and taking jet to, and we've got basketball tomorrow morning and then we've got one of the actual migrants we uh, moved over. He's, um, he coaches the soccer or football, they call it, you know, whatever, soccer football team. He's actually playing down this way, so I'm off to see him and then the Mighty Pies play tomorrow against Adelaide. That'll be a good one. Yeah. So we, we, got, we got them on at 1.30 with the family and then, Sunday we got footy all morning um, and throw in a couple of birthday parties and you know you just spend a lot of time in the car but but how good is it mate when you when you can just see the kids just walk down to the beach or jump on their bikes on all the bike tracks we got it's just it's just so good to live here like we've only been back a couple of years but that's why I moved back so the kids can really get out there and I really I'm so proud to be able to raise my children in Australia um, yeah I really am I, you know you probably are the same. Yeah, and it's it's great to hear you say that because a lot of Australians take it for granted because it's all they've ever known. Um, and, and I do point out sometimes to, to my to my mates to say, this is phenomenal. You know, this is um, this is nothing like you know we experienced elsewhere. And you know, and I feel very proud to be Australian, very proud to be a South Australian, and, and very lucky to live live here. Um, I mean, we haven't we haven't even touched on schooling yet. Um, I mean, schooling and uh, we we've got some great state schools, but private schooling is also much more accessible over here. I mean, obviously yeah. you've still got your elite schools where, you know, you can pay a, a, a really healthy uh, subscription, but, you know, um, it's it's a lot more accessible out here. And, and um, my, um, my daughter and my son have been through the private uh, schooling. And again, that's, uh, that's paid dividends. Absolutely. What about, um, yeah. What about, I guess, um, you know, Mrs. You know, Mrs. Collins. What you know? How is she? Like, you know, she is she British? I was about to say was British. Um, I assume she still is British. Um, yeah, um, yeah. She's she, adapted well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, um, because of our situation, she um, has the ability to work part time, and, and I don't work part time. But I must emphasise that uh, having Sophie full time for those two days a week also is a full time job. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> she's not listening, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> Just for all the mums out there, we do appreciate everything you do. One hundred percent. So more than one hundred percent. But she uh, she gets time to spend with Sophie and build that relationship, you know, and and and, yeah. and that sort of thing with Sophie. So um, really, really important that she probably would have. Uh, had the opportunity to do in in the UK with our circumstances, but um, she works for um, a, a local um, uh, well major bank uh, in Adelaide and um, in, enjoys what she does there. But really enjoys coming home, doing all that coming home, and then enjoying uh, what SA has to offer. Yeah, I think that's the way we do it, isn't it? So many parents um, when we're chatting to them and on our private Facebook group and all that, they really 
but you get spun out. Even my wife, she's like, it's just so weird. She's a teacher. She was a teacher in the UK and we drop the kids off at school and like, the school bell goes and it's just parents walking all around the school. Like it's just normal. Like <laughs> kids just come out and they're sort of happy and you just, you know, it, it's, it's hard to be on the school run because you get, you get stuck chatting to so many different people. Um, Absolutely. I think we like to. I think we. I wouldn't say gossip, but we like it. We like we, we like a good old chat. Um, the Aussies, don't they? Like it's very like common a, to speak to someone and end up being in a half an hour conversation and being, you know, dragged away by one of the kids. Can't Dad? We got to go. We got to go. But yeah, it's nice, isn't it? We like a good yarn, as I always say. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's perfect. All right, so um, mate, just I guess you know, random questions, mate. Um, what's your favourite beach in SA? Uh, that would be Moana. Moana, yeah. and are you Adel- are you Port Adelaide or Adelaide in the footy? I'm um, Adelaide in the footy, and that's quite a funny one because when I arrived in South Australia all those years ago, um, the um, customs guy knew that we were coming over um, because of the police campaign, and uh, we went through customs and had a quick yarn with him as you do, and then yeah. uh, we walked away, and as we ca- he called us back, um, my, my mate and I, and I, he said, "Come here." And uh, we, we approached him and uh, said, oh, yes, what can I help? And even being a police officer, I was a bit nervous at this point, even though there was nothing wrong. And uh, yeah, he no, said, feeling, mate. The, make, sure, make sure you go to the Crows. And I had no idea what he was talking about, obviously, at the time. But um, I, I stayed true to uh, what he wanted us to do. Uh, and, uh, yeah, went for the Crows from there onwards. <laughs> You're like the first Brit that listens, mate. I've told so many people to go for the Mighty Magpies and they don't listen. <laughs> like, mate, go for the pies and I catch up with them. Who do you go for? Oh, Melbourne. I'm like, why? Because I live in Melbourne. I'm like, mate, we're going to 16 team off. You know, half the half the, so half the teams are in Melbourne. Um, all right, cool. And then you mentioned the wineries and all that sort of stuff as well. But um, you got sort of like favourite sort of walks or parks and that that you go to, mate? We're so lucky where we are. So look, an average, I'll give you an, an average day and, and I posted this to um, our applicants we've got at the moment a couple of weeks ago. So um, a couple of weekends ago, and, and this um, this isn't uh, unusual for, for us. So we, we headed off from our home and we went down to the Onkaparinga River and the mouth of the Onkaparinga River. And uh, we had a walk through the sand dunes and onto the uh, onto the beach there. It was a beautiful blue sky. Um, um, white sand um sophie had a play of the sand that's my daughter and then uh, she had a paddle in the um mouth of the onkaparinga river because the tide was out we then and this is a bit i love we, we then had to walk back to the car and i've got a ute and uh we um put our stuff away and went to beck's bakery which is a fantastic bakery full of uh full of amazing cakes and pastry we grabbed some food and went back to the ute cranked to the back of the ute and sat on the uh, tail of the ute at the river watching uh, the world go by uh, and then got the fishing rods out and fished from the back of the ute while she was catching little whiting and brim and all those types of things. I was so, just about to ask you what were you catching? Did you say you caught a few? That's good. Yeah, and nothing that we would take home, but um, again, just a, just great opportunities that um, are, are there for the taking. So um, we've got great bicycle tracks, we've got the, the Onkaparinga River where you can kayak, where you can fish. Uh, I like my running, so I do trail running with a local group on the on the Saturday, so we, we can run in the Onkaparinga Gorge. Um, there's lots of races around Adelaide if you want to do that and in, in the hills. Um, and then you've got the city, um, Glenelg, Brighton, um, all those amazing places that you can go to and visit. So, oh, mate, it's so, mate, it, it sounds awesome. No, no yeah. I think I'm. Yeah, I think I'll just have a chat with Lee Terry. She's really making this bit South Australia bias. But everyone we speak to, the migrants and all that, they're kind of like, oh, it's a bit of a hidden secret. Um, but Scott, I, I wish you really well with um, with this campaign, mate. And I, you know, I really think anyone listening out there, um, this isn't this this is an amazing opportunity. Um, Scott, for what it's worth, I know that the teachers and the nurses and all that come out here in droves and and really appreciate the work life balance that Australia has to offer, and also probably the standards um that are involved in that would you say that um and i know it's tough because you did work in the uk for a bit and you don't have to answer but would you say that um working as a police officer in police officer in south australia um is when say easier i think you know the word i'm trying to be is it better easier whatever but is it is it more enjoyable than doing it in the uk what did you prefer what would you say people would prefer Look, I much prefer policing um, here, and the, and the reason being is that everywhere has its challenges. You know, every employment has its challenges, and it's called work for a reason, I suppose. But um, yeah. um, 
what it, what you combine over here, especially with SAPOL, um, is a, a pretty good organisation. Um, it certainly looked after me and continue to do so. Um, and combine that with a lifestyle outside of work um, that gives endless opportunities. So um, there were definitely great times that I had working for Thames Valley Police, and I'm not ashamed to say I came from the UK. Absolutely not. That's not what I'm saying. But what yep. I am saying is, is when it was time to go home, um, you know, there were opportunities, but certainly not as many uh, as there are here in South Australia. And again, you know, going back to um, the family side of things, um, absolutely. A hundred percent. This is the place to bring up uh, a family in comparison. So, again, um, ha happy life outside of work, uh, and then happy in work, and um, yeah, it, you know, it, it makes for a good uh, ending. But you know, I'll always say, Wes, um, that Australia isn't perfect, and it's important that people understand that life still goes on, and it throws its ups and downs. Um, what about taxes? But well, this is it. And, you know, but as far as I'm concerned, um, I have no regrets from living and working here in South Australia and I much prefer doing life here than uh, on the other side of the world, that's for sure. I really like that saying, doing life, because that's what we are, isn't it? We're just, yeah. we're just we're just in this world for a moment of time and it's what we do and how we do it. And Scott, people just, this is huge, mate. Migrating to the other side of the world is huge. It's about the support. And I think that's what's really good with what you guys are throwing together there at SAPOL that, you know, you've got that support there for them and, and you've got that sort of personal, um, you know, yep, you've got one, probably the longest title I've ever seen in my life, but <laughs> you've also got that very compassionate side. And I know that you'll take care of the people that are, um, you know, could be joining you for. So um, guys, um, well, massive thank you, um, Scott, for, um, for taking the time out, mate, um, for this podcast. I wish you all the best with it. Um, Thanks, Scott, and we'll um, catch up with everyone on the next podcast. Anything you'd like to add before we go, mate? No, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you here in South Australia, that's for sure. Good on you guys. Take care, everyone. Enjoy Oz. See ya.